Hello. Um, my presentation today I have titled Modern Problems in Historic Cemeteries, and you'll find out why in just a second. Um, uh, my presentation outline um, sort of set the scene of, of this particular um, paper and how it came, came about. I'll define what I mean by modern problems, um, offer some solutions, um, talk about who, in my case, I believe might be responsible, and then um, give my recommendations. So I, I work in Charleston, South Carolina, um, and Charleston is a well-loved historic city, and in no small part due to its lovely churchyards, which sit next to its numerous houses of worship, known as the Holy City, over two dozen churches are located in the historic district of the peninsula, and half of them have adjoining churchyards. Many are no longer active, which has led in some parts to their deterioration. Others, while active, try to balance the conservation of historic monuments with the addition of new burials and new markers. So as a conservator, it has become increasingly surprising and I might say frightening, that it's the newer monuments that are now requiring interventions to keep visitors safe. And this is actually an image of um, St. Philip's Churchyard on Church Street in downtown Charleston. Um, some level of deterioration is expected, of course, when a tablet or ledger is from Charleston's colonial days. The earliest marker in the city still extant is most likely the Simmons Vault, located in the circular churchyard, said to date from 1698 or 99, and many early 18th century slate stones still exist in the circular church graveyard, which um, is this cemetery here that I'm showing you, um, and also in the churchyard of nearby St. Philip's, which is an adjoined um, property-wise with through a, a little gate you can get from one to the other. Um, these stones are well documented to have come from New England since the low country of South Carolina has no resources for quarrying stone. And the modern stone of choice in Charleston today, as I would think is true all over the United States, is granite. Modern granite markers are evident in many of Charleston's historic churchyards, including the French Huguenot Church, which is shown in this slide, and St. Philip's Church, where internments are still allowed. In recent years, it is increasingly that these are the stones which are failing among all the historic ones that I'm um, conserving. Tablets falling off of bases, large crosses, wobbling and turning on small pins, plaque markers and ledgers at grade sinking into the ground, which has led me to ask, are the construction techniques for modern monuments such that the safety of visitors to historic churchyards is at greater risk? Is it the responsibility of the churches to dictate to modern monument installers a code of conduct? And is this a local issue or is it widespread? I was compelled to bring this issue to this particular conference in hopes of hearing from others of you who may be experiencing the same problems and to hear what your solutions might be. For me, after over a decade of repairing historic monuments, I have come to expect to find markers with numerous pieces cut or carved to fit together like puzzle pieces each locking into the other, as in the case of a stone chest tomb, or tablets cut with a tab to fit neatly into the opening of a base, or a die on a flat base connected with large iron pins and lime mortar. So it was surprising to me to find that the manufacturers of today do not always follow this historic example, but instead often rely on sheer weight as a connecting mechanism. So to show more clearly exactly what I'm talking about, 
I will offer these illustrations of modern monument failure that I have dealt with in the last few years. Um, large granite tablets that have fallen off bases, in some cases seemingly by the overgrowth of vegetation. Um, this particular marker, the sexton called me and said, Francis, Francis, come over. The azalea bush has put, pushed the stone off of its face. <laughs> and I didn't believe him. Um, and then, of course, other ledgers which have fallen off of the bases where, unfortunately, this is um, a wonderful little chapel of ease um, called Strawberry Chapel, and it's some miles outside of Charleston. They have a terrible um, problem with vandalism, and so this, this one got a lot of help, unfortunately. Um, a really surprising problem that I've encountered more and more over the last couple of years is ledgers that are slowly sinking below grade. Um, other markers, granite markers, sitting on a base which begin to literally slide off as an, oh, wrong way, um, which is in the case of this one, as you can see where it originally was meant to be, and something like this. And this actually is, is a stone that has a base, and you can't, it's totally gone below grade. Um, and then, of course, these ledgers that were meant to lay up right above grade and now are slowly being eaten up by the surrounding soil. In taller monuments, most often crosses, which can literally spin on the one pin holding it upright, in the past few years, I've tended to get phone calls from the churches I work for um, because during the course of a new burial, those in attendance did what is second nature. They looked for a place to sit or lean and found that the stone they chose was not stable. So after years of conservation of only historic monuments, I was put in the position of having to deal with monuments installed within the last 20 or 30 years, not 120 or 30 years ago. Um, and so of all the monument failures used to illustrate um, this definition of modern problems, I've addressed them and they've been repaired. And, um, and most of the, the problems shown in this presentation required rebuilt foundations and connections in the case of Diazon Base. And so I'm going to show you a few before and afters just so that you can see that I really did address some of these problems. Um, I normally, in a case, I keep punching the wrong button. Um, in cases like this, you can just barely see it. I'm sorry I didn't get a really good one, but I use a gantry crane, um, chain fall, and straps, of course, to lift larger monuments like this and move them aside while um, resetting the foundations with compacted sand and gravel and then sometimes a uh, concrete pad as well. And that would have been the case. Um, this, is <laughs> this is an interesting one. As this stone was pulled up, put aside, and the new foundation um, was being readied, we found that the original installer clearly just grabbed whatever else he could grab when he was laying his foundation. And he picked up this little foot stone and threw it in there as well. Um, and so we saved this little footstone. Um, you can just, I can't complain too much about what happened before me, but that's unbelievable. But anyway, um, and then um, modern, a modern issue as well, which I don't normally like to have to come across, um, sinking and falling backwards and picking out the coping stone, because sadly the vault is right here about four inches below grade. Um, so that was a problem with um, improper burial, um, which I really don't like to have to deal with. Um, and, and then again, one that is not only sinking, but this, of course, is not attached and sliding off, and then that's the repair. So as you um, might imagine, <laughs> I began to ask why this was happening in the first place. And after many repairs of foundations and connections, I had to place the blame on the manufacturers of these modern monuments. 
and their installers. The design is such that stack pieces are intended to stay in place with a putty-like snake setting compound and sheer gravity. And as for the foundation of these monuments, I have observed the installers clearing the footprint, digging only a few inches below grade where they dump a partial bag of quickcrete, often with only the moisture of the ground to wet it, and then the monument pieces are stacked on top. Of course, when I've had to repair these modern failures, this process has been confirmed. So this led me to do a little research, and I found that some states are clearly more engaged in ensuring safe modern cemetery monuments and historic cemetery states, such as Massachusetts and Michigan, have published guidelines for preservation of historic cemeteries. Their intended audience, those in charge of municipal cemeteries, but whose information is useful to church or privately owned as well. In my case, I've decided that it will have to be the church administrator and the cemetery committees that I work for that will need to have clearly stated rules for installation of new monuments into historic graveyards since they are ultimately responsible for the safety of visitors inside their gates. To begin my research into the creation of these rules, I found the information most helpful for my purposes, though came from European sources, especially those available from English Heritage and Historic Scotland. In English Heritage's Paradise Preserved, they cited a survey which recorded 2,047 churchyards and cemeteries in the UK, and 83% of those were still receiving new burials. And most of them were very concerned for their future preservation needs. In the UK, as well as in the US, there have been increasing reports of deaths and accidents in cemeteries and historic graveyards. The concern for the safety of all monuments in these landscapes, which welcome visitors, is now much more publicized. And actually, one of the churches I've mentioned um, in this presentation today has experienced the death of a child within its churchyard and as a result has been locked to visitors ever since. English Heritage has actually created testing procedures to measure risk, which begins with visual inspection, but follows with exerting physical force to estimate possible failure by recording any movement of the stones, bases, or at their connecting joints. I, too, was encouraged to survey the markers in St. Philip's two summers ago after a fairly new monument was found to be rocking very badly during a new burial. So shortly after, each was assessed and its hazard ranked. Although the percentage was small, the evidence was shocking. And although you can expect less risk of serious injury with a smaller marker, taller ones carry a large potential for instability and required immediate bracing until a permanent repair could be carried out. My recommendations to these church groups that I work for will first state that all new memorials planned for the churchyard must be first approved by the governing cemetery committee and the church administrator. Uh, this is done to some degree already, but they were written about 50 years ago, so we're talking about a, a little revision. And that a general survey be conducted at least every five years. Specific requirements would include a detailed drawing of the memorial, showing all dimensions, materials, inscriptions, and lettering. A detailed illustration of the connection me mechanisms between the ground and the base and each subsequent piece stacked above. A foundation of compacted sand and gravel and or a precast concrete foundation slab just below grade. A central ground anchor through the base of the stack memorials and stainless steel threaded pins between each additional component. Additionally, aesthetic issues could be addressed in this document to prevent unfortunate selection of granite color or lettering which visually is not in agreement with the historic landscape. And the best illustration I found when I was um, doing my research is this, this great one from, again, my UK friend, which on the left, of course, shows the historic precedence 
for monuments and their stability. And then over on the far right, very clearly showing um, the, the connecting mechanisms for each piece starting at the foundation through the base and then the pieces like the tablets that are up above ground. So, so in conclusion, I can only hope that in the future when burials and modern monuments are inserted into the landscape of historic burial grounds, that the risk of failure or injury to the visitor will be reduced or eliminated. Cooperation will certainly be the key between all affected parties. The families requesting the modern mon markers, the cemetery committee and the church administrator, and the monument companies supplying and installing the stone. Um, I, for one, hope that that happens really soon. I uh, thank you for your attention and look forward to any conversations I will have while here for the conference about this issue. Thank you.